What's going on, everyone? So the Dallas Mavericks have officially eliminated the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Dallas is heading to the NBA Finals to take on the Boston Celtics. That should be a really fun, really exciting series. Looking forward to that. We're still about a week away uh, from that matchup, or at least at the time of recording this video. And look, Dallas was very impressive in this Western Conference Finals. Um, you know, the Minnesota Timberwolves, in my opinion, they don't have anything to hold their head down on. Uh, this is a team that is incredibly young. I uh, think this was a big learning experience for them to, to take the strides from, you know, look at the last few years from like, you know, winning the play and to, you know, losing in the, the first round to, you know, now, now you're in the conference finals. And it's like, th there's a very bright future and potential for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate that they went out the way that they went out against the Dallas Mavericks, but I do expect this team to kind of come back uh, just full force, right? Anthony Edwards said, you know, we'll be back here again next year. I wouldn't be shocked at all. And I think that this was a good opportunity and good experience for Anthony Edwards himself, right? All the hype, all the noise, all of the, you know, Michael Jordan comparisons and all that stuff, right? He had his struggles in this series, right? The, the, the final games, he kind of did much better, but still, like, he definitely had his struggles. I think that this is good for somebody that's 22 years old. Right to have these learning experiences to kind of be in these positions, I think is only going to make him better as he continues and as he progresses. And there is an argument to be made for Minnesota to just kind of run it back, right? Bring the team back. Trust that Anthony Edwards takes another stride, takes another leap next season. Take you know the the chemistry. I mean, they're the number one defense in the league. I definitely think that they need to do some things to kind of upgrade the offense because that was a big problem. Their, their lack of scoring at times. Um, but I think if you, there's an argument to be made to kind of just round out the bench a little bit, maybe trim around the edges, uh, kind of get some key upgrades, right? Minnesota doesn't have like a plethora of assets to go and make some huge thing. Like They're not like the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is a team that beat the defending champions, sweep the Phoenix Suns, right? Like they had a good run. Um, they match up, I think, incredibly well to most of these teams, right? I think just matchup wise, you look at this team and you're just like, man, like I, I think that they have the opportunity and potential to really beat anybody. And I mean, going into this series, and again, credit Dallas, going into this series, it looked like Minnesota was going to be this powerhouse. You saw a team that easily could have been hoisting the Larry O'Brien trophy at the end of this season. They matched up, I believe, very well to the Boston Celtics. And you saw like this series and the playoffs period were all about matchups. They were built perfectly to kind of just run through Phoenix and then also match up well against the Denver Nuggets. And then they ran into Dallas who they matched up well and they had some key advantages and they had that rim protection that kind of bothered Anthony Edwards. And then Luka and Kyrie being the best closers in the league and you know, or two of the best closers in the league. And they were able to kind of just neutralize the defensive player of the year and Rudy Gobert. And it just, there, there's definitely some positives, but I also think that there's some real negatives, right? And the question is, is like, again, you could just kind of run it back, keep the chemistry, kind of upgrade in some key areas. But I also think you have to at least explore Carl Anthony Town trades. Now, I don't think you necessarily have to trade him, but... I think if you can get that kind of complimentary upgraded scorer and then on top of that, maybe get a key role player or two to kind of, like I said, bolster the bench a little bit. I think Carl Anthony Towns, I think you should look to ship him out, especially because Nas Reed, I know he didn't have a, fine, a good final game, but he was very impressive and very good throughout this postseason. And I think... You, you have that luxury now of like, okay, Nas Reed can kind of offset a lot of what Carl Anthony Towns does, especially spreading the floor, you know, some of the rebounding, the defense. I, I mean, I just, also, you can make an argument Nas Reed is more versatile in that, in that department. So I just, I looked at what Nas Reed was doing and I kind of was just keeping it in the back of my mind, all, pretty much all playoffs. Like, man, like, if you were to look and explore Carl Anthony Towns trade and the right trade is there, I, I think Nas Reed gives you the luxury of being able to kind of pull the trigger on that and get that done, right? Again, not saying you have to trade him, but if you can get some clear upgrades, you know, get some clear pieces that maybe make more sense that kind of can 
elevate the roster, can kind of take some pressure off of Anthony Edwards a little bit, to not be the primary scorer, and, and still maintain a level of defense. Right? If you could still be, not even, not even if you're number one defensively, let's say you can still be top three to five defensively, right? If you could do that, but now let's say you're top three to five offensively, then I just think you're an overall better team. And Carl Anthony Towns, man, like, as great as he can be at times, he drives me crazy watching him play. He has, you just see him make some of the lowest IQ just decisions out of anybody I've ever seen. Like, he, he, he'll he have, like, a great sequence at times and then immediately follow that up with, like, three straight possessions that you're just like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's just like, wow, and... If you're somebody that, like, didn't watch the games, you might look at the box score and you might go, man, he had, like, 25 and 12 or whatever, right? Like, man, he was really good. But if you actually watch the games, it's like, man, he was turning the ball over like crazy in key moments. He's just making poor decisions, poor shot selection. The guy is 7 feet, but he plays like he's 6'5". Now, a lot of that is Rudy Gobert, but still, it's just like, dude, even when Rudy's out of the game, he just, it's like he, he doesn't want to be around the rim at times and I get you want to kind of use him to stretch out the big man so that way Anthony Edwards has a head of steam getting down but still there's times where the offense is just completely stagnant or there's times where even Anthony Edwards will be a little too passive and it's like you have a seven footer use him like dump the ball down to him let him go to work outside of just him dribbling you know taking three dribbles and just taking some poor shot out on the perimeter it's just, it's incredibly frustrating at times watching him just play the way that he plays. So I just, I, I, I think if, again, if you can use him to really upgrade in some key areas, maybe even try to get a, a you know, a, a not even all-star, but like borderline all-star point guard, right? Maybe move uh, Mike Conley to like the sixth man role. I think that could go a long way, right? And just kind of like, hey, you know, go go get, I don't know, DeJounte Murray or something and, and another piece or two to kind of round out the bench. Right? If you could work something out to where you could really kind of flip Cat and because you because if you're in Minnesota, you don't really want the picks or anything like that. You want, I mean, not saying you couldn't take some picks and maybe turn them into something, but you're in a position that you feel like you, you, you make the right move or two, you're hoisting the trophy, right? That Larry O'Brien is yours. So to me, it's like if you can turn Cat into that key piece or two that kind of upgrades you, I just think that that would go a long way and be much more valuable. But again, I mean, Minnesota, they have nothing to hand their hat on. This was a very good team that was very impressive, that had some very notable wins, that, again, looked like a team that could have won the championship this year and no one would have been surprised. All right? Anthony Edwards, I expect to continue to take strides. I think all of these guys, they're a young team. Right? Like they're, they're going to be here for a while. right? Now, don't get me wrong, the West is a juggernaut. And just because you were really good this year doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be as good next year. A lot of teams that are going to be looking to upgrade, a lot of teams that are in really good position. I mean, the Oklahoma City Thunder, for example, I mean, they have cap space, they have uh, like more draft picks than they know what to do with. They have a great young core. Right? They got, they're probably going to shop Josh Giddy. Like, they are in position to, I, you know, they could be in this position next year if if Minnesota isn't careful, right? Like, so it just because you had the success, I think you need to at least be on the lookout. But just because you're on the lookout doesn't mean you have to do something, right? If it's not there, don't take it. But if it is there, I think you take it. But if worst case scenario, you're kind of just running it back, you know, maybe getting a, a piece or two to bring off the bench, I think you're still in good shape. But, but as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think the Minnesota Timberwolves should do? Do you think that you just, hey, you're right there, run it back, right? Get a key piece or two to bring off the bench, right? Again, they don't have like a, a huge amount of flexibility, but they definitely could make make a move or two, make some key decisions, right? It's just, you know, it, it's what can those pieces be? But do you think like that should be what they explore? Do you think, no, you should try to look for maybe like a minor trade? Do you think Carl Anthony Towns is the answer? Like, yes, look for a Carl Anthony Towns trade, try to get something done in that regard. I just, again, you look at this roster, it's like not trading Anthony Edwards. You're 
you probably wouldn't be able to trade Rudy Gobert. And even if you did, you're probably not going to get anything close to what it's worth to potentially move him. Um, and then on top of that, it's like, you know, you're not trading McDaniels. So it's uh, who else is on the roster that teams are really going to value that you're going to be able to get a, a real quality upgrade or piece. I think Carl Anthony Towns is kind of the the one piece that makes the most sense. And then on top of that, you add in that you have Nas Reed. I just think that it gives you that luxury, as I mentioned. But, you know, do you feel the same way? Do you not? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.